Hi folks, today we're going to be talking about Qigong. Rather than teach you any particular style of Qigong, that is how to do any particular Qigong practice, my goal here is to give you enough information for you to be able to understand what Qigong is and how to take that information and apply it to any style of Qigong that you may choose to practice a little farther down the road. Uh, as you'll learn, uh, both in this vlog and in other vlogs in this short series that I'm planning to present for you guys, is that there are many, many different styles of Qigong, and they each have very specific purposes, and you probably will find that uh, there will be some Qigongs that are better suited for your particular needs at this particular point in your life. And I'm, I feel I'll be uh, providing the best service to you in helping you in that way so you can uh, select the Qigongs that are going to work best for you as you, um, as you make those choices going forward. Um, we're going to define what Qigong is and I'd like to also uh, at the end of this vlog present to you what some expected benefits you might have from uh, any particular Qigong practice that you decide upon in the future. Um, so let's begin first by defining what Qigong is. And we'll, we'll do that by looking at the word itself. Um, Qigong is made up of two syllables, Qi and Gong. Um, now in the Chinese language, every syllable is a discrete word in and of itself. So we have two words, Qi and Gong, and when you do combine them, the meanings are just a little bit different than each word by itself. But looking at each word by itself will give us some significant clues as to what the whole word uh, Qigong means. In my first vlog, I went into great detail about what Qi is. So here, I'm going to give you an abbreviated version that will suit our purposes just fine. Um, qi most simply is translated as the word energy and more specific to your health and your body. Qi means the energy of your life, your vital life force. Uh, qi is what animates you. It's what um, stimulates your intellect. It's what gives you emotional experience. It is the energy of all your physiological processes and the sum total of the energy of those processes. Um, so it basically is what helps you be you, uh, your personality, your outlook on life, um, it's what animates you and it's what keeps you alive. As I said, Qi is life force. It is the energy of life. Um, so that, for today, that's plenty for you to uh, consider when looking at the word Qi. Now, when we look at the word Gong, uh, there are historical uses of the word that actually do feed into very nicely the word as it's used in Qi Gong. Um, so historically, Gong meant what somebody did with their life, uh, that is, their occupation, their practice in life. So for example, if someone was a carpenter, woodworking would be their gong. If someone was a magistrate, uh, practicing law would be their gong. Um, if someone's a, a musician, practicing their musical instrument would be their gong. Um, so. In a couple of those uh, examples I gave, I used the word practice. Practice is the word that's most commonly used as a single word translation for the word gong. And as you can see in the examples I gave, in those, in those contexts, practice it involves putting effort into something over time to become accomplished at that. Um, we can also think of, say, a physician having a medical practice just as a musician practices their instrument. In that context, practice is a pretty uh, complete translation if we have a greater understanding of other things that are going along with the word gong. Um, and those other things are this. Gong has four main attributes associated with it. And as you'll, as you'll see, those four attributes um, have some bearing on, in the historic context of the word gong, and even more so in the way gong is used when it's attached to the word qi and qi gong. Those four main attributes are effort put into a practice over a period of time 
to achieve a desired result or an objective. So when we look at the word effort, that means that we have to understand that Qigong is not going to be something you're going to learn very easily and um, not, not invest time, not invest your energy, not invest your focus on really learning how to do it well. Um, there is some effort involved in learning to do Qigong. Now, if we look at um, the Taoist perspective on the word effort, and this is an important little sidebar, and I think whether you're looking at a Taoist Qigong or any other Qigong, this is an important concept to get. Effort means putting full effort, but only at 70% of your total capacity. So you want to put your full effort into 70% of whatever it is you're going to be doing in this perspective, in this context. And in that way, you never get make yourself overtired, you never strain yourself, you never physically hurt yourself, you never increase your stress, you never make yourself more tense. Um, so effort here means full effort without strain. Uh, so you always have a 30% margin of safety when you're working at your 70%. But you put your full effort into that 70%. So the second attribute we looked at was the word practice. Um, so here, practice is the whole Qigong itself. It's uh, attending to all of the facets of the thing that makes the practice a Qigong. Uh, very briefly now, that means regulating your body, regulating your breathing, regulating your mind. We're going to go into much greater detail about those three regulations in another vlog. But uh, that's what's contained in a Qigong practice. Now here I'd also like to make a distinction between a practice and an exercise. Because Qigong is not an exercise. That's something that's, um, that can be a little confusing for Westerners because we do use our bodies when we're doing Qigong. And we can use our bodies in varying ways. And some, some of those ways you're standing completely still, so there's nothing physically active about it. But in most Qigongs there are active components and you are moving your body around and because you're moving your body a lot of people think it's a kind of exercise and in fact colloquially many people refer many qigong teachers even will refer to a qigong exercise but um, exercise is a problematic word because in the western world when we think of doing an exercise we think of doing something that we learn how to do maybe uh, spend a little bit of time learning how to do an exercise and then we just repeat that exercise over and over again without necessarily giving it any particular thought so you'll do like 50 sit-ups or you'll you'll jog every day for three miles or uh, you know wh whatever your exercise is you do that thing in sort of a rote repetitious way when you're doing Qigong, you can't do that. You have to have your attention focused on every aspect of the practice um, that's involved in making the practice of Qigong. So that's why we use the word practice in the definition of the word gong itself rather than exercise. In fact, uh, I've known a number of uh, very high-level Qigong practitioners, teachers, and they will, more than one, has gently admonished me in my younger days, and I've seen them do the same thing with other students, saying, you're not really doing a Qigong, you're just doing an exercise. You know, if, if we weren't there with our full attention, if we weren't really focused on what we were doing in the most accurate way for a Qigong to really be done. So Qigong is not an exercise. It's important to know that it's a practice. Um, the third characteristic we talked about was the element of time. The element of time uh, also has a lot of implications in it. So uh, a lot of people might get put off by the thought of investing a long period of time into something because these days people have fairly limited amount of time under most circumstances. Uh, so it is important to know that you will get commensurate benefits uh, to the amount of time that you invest in your Qigong practice. Um, so if you invest a little bit of time, you will get a little benefit. Uh, you can experiment with a number of different styles of Qigong to kind of get the flavor of that particular Qigong. 
uh, to get a little insight into what that Qigong might offer. But you won't really know that Qigong unless you put in the amount of time required to gain at least a little bit of competence moving towards mastery. Um, in its most extreme example, we can look at um, Malcolm Gladwell's example of um, the 10,000 hour rule. He's, uh, he stated um, in his book, I believe, Outliers. And for those of you who don't know, Malcolm Gladwell is a, a science writer. He's not a Qigong master. He's not involved with Chinese medicine or anything like that. But he studies many different topics and he studied advanced meditators and he studied people who are very advanced in scientific fields. And what he's come up with and what he, he found other scientists actually state this um, 10,000 hour rule meaning that in order to gain mastery of any cognitively complex topic you need to plan on spending 10,000 hours doing that thing. So 10,000 hours is roughly uh, 20 hours a week for 10 years, something along those lines. Um, most people aren't going to put 20 hours a week into something for 10 years, but um, if you decide to do that, uh, what they all, what Malcolm Gladwell also found in his research is no matter what stage you are in your life you can you can attain that mastery by putting that amount of time into a practice in a focused way now remember we're putting effort into the practice over time so um, it's not just that again you're doing something by rote for 10,000 hours you won't get much benefit that way either but you're, you're using all of your focus and you're applying everything that you have learned about what goes on in the particular Qigong you're doing. And you can attain mastery in that amount of time. Now, along the way towards mastery, you're going to get commensurately more and more and more benefits. So don't think that because you're not going to spend 10,000 hours on something that it's not worth you doing. Um, you, it is definitely worth doing and very very few people these days put that kind of time into their Qigong practice and they they tend to be much healthier people much more well balanced people uh, happier people so you get all of those benefits and more with much shorter investment of time but do understand that time is a component of Gong um, and then the, the fourth characteristic or the fourth quality or fourth attribute of Gong is that we're working towards a particular goal or uh, an objective, something we want to accomplish. Now in the earlier examples of um, say a carpenter uh, doing woodworking, his goal could be to become a master carpenter uh, or a musician's goal could be to become a master musician so that you, know, you can tour the world and um, that's that's attaining a level of mastery. That's their goal um, in their in that particular gong. Now in qigong, the goal is to learn how to work with your qi or to work with the energy of your life. And by working with qi, we, we basically mean we need to learn how to first sense what it is to feel it in our own bodies, then how to acquire more of it and that's what the practice of Qigong will help you do, uh, and then to learn how to direct it in your body, in every aspect of your body. So we're talking about your physical being, but also um, your emotional body, your mental body. Uh, you can use it for spiritual development. There's many, many ways you can apply um, your, cultiv your Qi cultivation when you're doing Qigong. The basic goals in most Qigongs involve at least to some degree and at some level to become healthier because qi is your vital life energy. The more qi you have, the, the healthier you're going to be. We said before that um, the, the energy that drives all your physiological processes is qi. So if you have more qi, if you have more energy, everything in your body is going to function better. So if you are someone who has digestive problems, your digestive system is going to function better. If you don't have digestive problems, your digestive system will stay very strong and will get even stronger so you can extract even more nutrition from the food that you eat. Uh, if you have 
uh, lung problems if you're prone towards colds or if you have emphysema or if you have asthma or just you get short of breath easily um, your lungs will over time function better because you're giving them more life energy so there's a lot of uh, focused goals you can apply your qigong to uh, most of the medical qigong systems have specific uh, areas of focus where they'll, you'll target specific aspects of your health that you want to improve. But in general, Qigong is going to improve your health. It's going to increase your vitality. Um, it tends to lower people's stress levels. It normalizes blood pressure. It helps keep you emotionally balanced. Over time, it will clear and sharpen your mind so you can be more present. You can accomplish more things that involve mental um, problem solving or just working on any particular mental tasks um, and you just have more energy to get through your day no matter what it is you do in your day so when we look at the definition of qigong so we have qi is your vital life energy and gong is effort over time put into a particular practice for a desired result so qigong is effort that you put into working with your chi for the rest of your life to extend the healthy years of your life and if you extend the healthy years of your life you'll also be increasing your longevity because there'll be fewer you, you'll you won't be getting sick so easily there'll be fewer and slower degenerative changes as you age um, so longevity can be a um, one of the goals in qigong so that means we're investing effort and time into working with the energy of life in order to be able to sense chi, acquire more chi, direct it at will, uh, both in our bodies and towards specific other goals that we may want to accomplish. Um, and those are the, the goals or the purposes to which we apply our qigong practice. Now, in China, qigong is part of traditional Chinese medicine. That means it's often used along with acupuncture treatments, herbal medicine, uh, maybe a Taiji practice. And Taiji in that context is also a type of Qigong. We'll be talking about that in another, another one of these vlogs a little while later. Um, so the Qigongs themselves can provide very distinct health benefits and they can be used to treat specific disease conditions as it's practiced in China. Um, in the United States, for varying reasons, we don't say that Qigong can be used to treat diseases. Mostly there are uh, legal concerns about making those type of claims. Um, but in China, Qigong is used for everything uh, from preventing colds to curing asthma to being an adjunctive therapy for curing, for treating and curing cancer. Uh, so there's a wide range of health benefits that, that you can get from practicing Qigong. Um, now, Westerners are increasingly familiar with some of the health benefits of Taiji because that's a little more researched in the United States. So even conventional Western doctors might recommend that some of their patients practice Tai Chi for the purpose of, say, improving their balance, increasing bone density, reducing stress, lowering blood, lowering high blood pressure. Um, those are all things that Qigong does, and Qigong can help you do that sooner in some instances than practicing Tai Chi, only because Tai Chi is a very complex and lengthy form of Qigong. There's a lot of movements in Tai Chi, and uh, Tai Chi is really a very wonderful practice, and we will talk about that in greater detail in another vlog, but for someone who's really working at improving a specific health challenge, you might want to select the Qigong that's going to target your particular issue so you can really more immediately start working on your health challenge and get healthy so that then you have your choice of doing whatever else you want to do with the rest of your life. Uh, so even though you have to invest time in your Qigong practice, you don't have to invest 10,000 hours to improve your health. So one last thing about the word Qigong itself, um, the word itself is relatively new. 
and this is something that might surprise a lot of people, but I believe it first appeared in print in China in 1949, or the end of the 1940s anyway. Um, the practice itself is thousands of years old, and it's gone by uh, many different names. And uh, the, the different ways that it's named are often variations on a practice, just like now there are many, many different styles of Qigong, um, some of those different styles had specific names um, other than Qigong three or four or five thousand years ago. And just because the practice is that old, also understand that it has continually evolved over the centuries. So it's not something that has remained static. Uh, there are uh, modifications, improvements. Uh, developments. There's a lot of research and development that goes into Qigong practices to make the practices stronger and more efficient and more targeted for particular needs. So um, I did want to point that out about uh, the word itself. And one last thing I will uh, point out to you for now is if you would like more information right away about um, Qi and about Qigong, I'd like to let you know of my second book. This is uh, been out since February of 2017, Chinese Holistic Medicine in Your Daily Life. And as you can see, one of the um, aspects in the book is Qigong. We talk here about acupressure, um, herbal remedies, Qigong, and what's not listed on the subtitle here are food remedies. Um, and I teach you how to combine all of those things to the benefit of your health. But the, the first chapter in the book is all about the concept of qi. So you can learn a lot more about qi in the first chapter of the book. And in chapter 16 and 17, uh, you'll learn more of qigong theory. And there's five qigong practices contained in that book, uh, one for each of the five main yin organs of your body, or the five elements uh, that are associated with them. So. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with me. And do look for, um, I'm thinking maybe two other vlogs in this particular series to deepen your understanding of Qigong and help you make the best choices for yourself. So thanks very much for your time. I hope this has been helpful.